Hey guys, it's Graham with Tutorial Clarity. Alright, first things first, I should tell you that this tutorial really should have been done a long time ago. Um, in between my Photoshop and HTML series, in one of my Photoshop tutorials I showed you how to slice a template that you made and basically import it into Dreamweaver, right? However, I didn't show you how to actually insert content over the image slices themselves, so uh, I feel that I need to wrap up that whole segment by doing this lesson. So uh, no fear, after this lesson is done I'll be continuing on with my tutorials in Adobe After Effects. But yeah, this is basically what I'm talking about. Being able to insert content, HTML, CSS, whatever you want, over these image slices that we previously made in my lesson um, on image slices in Photoshop. Well, inserting content over these image slices that we made basic, basically is what this is all about. But you can't insert content over images which themselves have text on them. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. If I go back into Photoshop, I already have the same project file that we had up in my previous lesson. So if you pull up your template or, you know, whatever you like, then we'll be good to go. But I assume you have a template done, a design done, and you want to get it into Dreamweaver and insert some content over it. But basically what I've done is just hid one segment. I'll unhide it to show you what I'm talking about. But here's my content and then I'm just hiding these text layers. The only reason, I'm, I, reason I had them there in the first place was completely for design reference. You know, I wanted to be able to say, okay, this is where my content is going to go when I actually get into Dreamweaver and this is kind of what I'd like, to, like it to look like. But um, yeah, same thing applies to the navigation up here. Um, not so much the logo or the jQuery button or anything like that. That's that's different, but um, yeah, the navigation text, in this case, that navigation would apply, and the content down here. So I'm just going to unhide those text layers for this one segment, and these two segments that are separated by these green bars, I will actually un not, not hide. So I'm going to go to File, as we did before, Save for Web Devices, and I'm going to hit Save, and I'm just going to go to... Uh, let's find my directory wherever it was before I think it was a uh, Photoshop slices from Photoshop yeah okay and here's my index file and what I'll do is I'll just overwrite it save and replace all the images we have to we have to do that <coughs> excuse me so anyway we're gonna hop over here in Dreamweaver and this is one thing Dreamweaver notices that our HTML document has changed so it's gonna say do I want to reload it Usually I would say no, but just for the sake of uh, not skipping anything, I want to hit yes. And it's going to reload the document. So I'm going to go pretty quick here. Everything I'm about to do was covered in my CSS and HTML tutorials, but uh, I'm just going to align the document to the center with a div. Up here at the top, and give that a space. Close the div down here. And uh, there we go there. Up here in the style, I'm going to create a style in the head. Style type equals text slash CSS. And background. Oops. Whoa. Sloppy typing today. Background image. Let's say, uh, oh, we got to put this in the body, don't we? My bad. Getting ahead of myself. Background image, and let's go to browse images and I have a thin background image here hit OK there it is it's just quicker that way background repeat and let's say repeat along the x-axis and I'm gonna hop back over to Photoshop real quick to get the bottom ending color just using my color picker the exact color dink pull that up copy hit OK that's all I'm doing. Hopping back over to Dreamweaver. And we're going to set the background color itself for when the image ends. Background color, number sign, bam. And if I hit Control S to save the document, preview in Firefox, give it a second to load, and there we go. And you'll see now our content is missing from this image here. And uh, now it is time to insert the content over it. So I'm going to come down here 
And I'm, I have my design set to split view. And when you're doing this process, it's very useful up here in Dreamweaver to select the split view as opposed to the code or the design. Um, split view allows you to go in between the code and the design itself. I usually work in this mode. So I click here and that selects the image down in the design and it also selects it up in the code. So it's easy to navigate straight to it. So what Photoshop did when it was slicing everything up is it created these table data segments and in between the table data it actually had exact width and height attributes for their image that we sliced in Photoshop. And that's it right there. Index underscore 09.jpg evidently is the index or the image jpg for uh, our slice there. So what I'm going to do, it's really, really simple, is after the SRC or source, image source, I'm going to get everything in the quotes all the way to the ending quote of height. So I have the quote image slash index underscore 09.jpg, the width and the height, and I'm just going to hit control X. And then I'm going to select this, delete the image tag, and in the table data, I'm going to set the physical table data background equal to, and then this is the fun part, all you have to do is hit control V, and it automatically gives the directory <laughs> from the image and the width and the height so you don't have any alignment issues. And now if I come down here, what do you know? I actually can select my cursor in here, and if I save the document, and go back into Firefox and I hit control A to select everything you'll see now that everything around this is an image and this is actually legitimate HTML content so that's very useful but now I'm gonna align this up here my content to the top let's say uh, V align equals top really is that simple now my content is no longer aligned in the center because by default the table data aligns all the content to the center and this is a tall table data so we're gonna start by default up at the top and this is all stuff covered in my previous HTML and CSS lessons but uh, I'm gonna open up a div here and I'm gonna say div style equals margin left 20 pixels no, let's just say 10 pixels something soft margin right 10 pixels if I go that far in margin, top, let's say, that's going to be about 25 pixels. And I'm just going to drop down, close the tag on that, left arrow forward slash, Dreamweaver automatically does it for me. And let's view my div, there it is right there. And that seems about good spacing, maybe change the margin from the top to about like 30 pixels. Eh, trying to get it as closely aligned try 40 yeah 40 is good so margin top is 40 pixels and that seems to align for me might be different on yours but anyway now something I would do is open up a uh, font tag font style equals uh, let's do the font family itself as a uh, Arial and let's do the color yeah we'll do the color set that to white and what else do we want to do um say font size set that to like I don't know 12 pixels and we'll close that off there and then I'll drop down and close out this and we'll say this is some content which was inserted over my Photoshop slice hit control s to save and preview in Firefox and there it is. So this is now legitimate HTML content that's been inserted over my HTML slice. Now here's one thing you got to be careful of. Um, if you ever insert an image into here, um, you have to be considerate. If your image width is longer than this width, everything will go completely distorted and it'll look really bad. So just be cautious of things like that. Um, I used a div to keep the padding and spacing in between the edges of this table data segment, you know, pretty uh, pretty aligned, pretty consistent.